So thank you, Dr. Bartley, for the kind introduction. For the next 15 minutes, I'll be talking on new frontiers in lipid management with a special reference to diabetes. The last couple of years has witnessed a sea change in lipid management, both in terms of finance understanding and in the availability of a panoply of new therapeutic options. Why we are so much concerned about lipid management? The first reason is that cholesterol never sleeps. It works 24 into 7 into 365 and executes its remedies on the cardiovascular system in the form of plaques in the arteries. And we know plaques are the major culprit for cardiovascular disease. They put us at risk of heart attack and stroke and heart attack is the number one killer of mankind and stroke is the number one cause of disability. The second reason why we are so much concerned with lipid management, more so in diabetics who are at high risk of CBD, is that lipid management has reached great strides and the last quarter of century has passed on big messages of therapeutic importance. So firstly, when we look at the issue, can we stabilize the plaque by lowering LDL? The answer is universally yes. And there are several statin trials. And if the plaque gets it stabilized, the probability of developing acute coronary event is minimized. The second issue is, can we reduce the plaque buildup, which means can we arrest the progression of atherosclerosis? Again, the answer is a big yes, and we have very clear data from the reversal trial where high-intensity statin etimolegram showed arrest of progression of atherosclerosis. And this occurs when the LDL levels are less than 65. The third big issue is, can we shrink the plaque by lowering LDL again? The answer is a big yes. And data comes from the GLOVEP trial where Ivalicumab, which is a PCSK9 monoclonal antibody, along with statin, produces regression of atherosclerosis. And this occurs when the LDL is decreased by more than 50. And the last big issue is, can we make the plaque disappear from the vessel wall by decreasing LDL? This is an unresolved issue, and maybe in future this is possible. So what is the big message coming from all this is, we can modulate at the risk process to a great extent. And the new big dicta which is coming up, that if you want to live without a CVD for 100 years, keep your LDL less than 70, throughout the life after 20 to 30 years. So if you want to be free of ACVD, this is the big message. And many pneumonaries in cardiology have their LDL 34, 40, 28, and are over 90s. So this is a big message. Now, when we look at the targets for LDL lowering in the current era, we are running the race to the bottom of LDL. All of us know if uh, there is a J curve for HDN. If you lower blood pressure less than 120, the J curve comes. If you lower glucose, the J curve comes. But for LDL, there is no J curve at the moment. And that's why all international guidelines and Indian guidelines, the LDL targets are coming lower and lower. And the dicta is lower is better and lowest is best for the very high risk. So ACCHA 70, lie 50 before any international guideline. Uh, showed this target, ESC 55 for the very high risk 40 and the extreme risk by lie that with Lipid Association of India 2021, which I am also a member, the target is 30. So we are running the race to the bottom of LDL. Now, when we look at the evolution of lipid guidelines from 1988 to 2021, uh, LDL is the primary target and non-HDL is the co-primary target. HDL is a fallen angel because all trials of HDL elevation by drugs have failed to show any benefit on top of statins and therefore 
HDL is a fallen angel. Triglycerides is still under evaluation. The ACCORD LLA trial was negative. The subgroup analysis was positive, but all of us know subgroup analysis only hypothesis generating, and there's no large randomized trial with this prominent trial with fibrase recently terminated prematurely because of lack of benefit. STEN trial with omega-3 facet is again terminated prematurely because of lack of anticipated benefit. The reduced trial was positive with icospent ethyl, which I'll show you. Seroglitz are, there's no outcome data. The reduced trial showed improved CB outcome, but when the data was analyzed in subgroup triglyceride, less than 50 one, and le more than 150, the same benefit is there, which clearly indicates that the mechanism of benefit in the reduced trial is not related to triglycerides. LPA, at the moment, there is no evidence-based target, but all of us know Pelacarsen, which is an anti-sense to FOA, which dramatically decreases LPA is ongoing and is very likely to come out as positive. And in near future, it is very likely we'll have an evidence-based target for LPA. And Pelacarsen is likely to emerge as a foundational, as a transformational therapy for LPA-induced cardiovascular disease, which all of us know is a malignant cardiovascular disease. So now when we look uh, over the years, say from 1980 to 2020, which means over 40 years, what has happened to different component of the lipids? If you look at the LDL after statin somewhere in 90s, it is mounting up and up. HDL initially there was a rise, but then all trials are negative, there's a fall. Triglycerides and LPA, there is a rising trend. There's a lot of talk about remnant cholesterol. Remnant cholesterol is nothing but total cholesterol minus HDL cholesterol minus LDL cholesterol which includes VLDL and ILDL. The normal values are shown here. The normal is uh, less than 15 and then 15 to 23 and 23 to 7, so on. And it is now believed that elevated LDL, it produces plaque formation. LPA elevated produce plaque formation and thrombus formation. And the remnant cholesterol produces inflamed, unstable plaque and plaque rupture, which will result in acute myocardial infarction or a stroke. There is enough data to show that if you have elevation of remnant cholesterol, there is increase in the ACVD event, whether it is myocardial infarction, whether it is PAD or ischemic stroke. But no trial has shown that if you decrease remnant cholesterol, there's decrease in the cardiovascular events. And therefore, the guidelines do not talk about remnant cholesterol at that present state of time. None of the guidelines will see there's a target for remnant cholesterol. The King statin continues to remain the foundational therapy for statins, and statins are wonderful drug. They have multifaceted actions. All of us know they improve endothelial function, they delipidates the plaque, so plaque gets stabilized, either you can see on a vascular MRI before and after, or by near infrared disruptoscopy in the yellow trial, you can see they are delipidating the plaque. And if the plaque gets delipidated, CV events will decrease. And these are hot plaques on a PET CT and statins cool down these hot plaques if you repeat CT oxygen. They promote calcification of the plaques, and if they are calcified, CV events are decreased and a lot of pleiotropic effects. One thing which is not often publicized is that statins, uh, dyslipidemia increases the thrombogenicity of the blood. And in real world, out of 10 plaques, only one plaque rupture culminates into an acute coronary event. And it is the thrombogenicity at the time of plaque rupture which is a very important determinant of culmination of a plaque rupture into a cardiovascular event, as you can see here. Now, if at the time of plaque rupture, you are on statin, your thrombogenicity will be less, and the probability of a plaque getting rupture in culminating into an acute coronary event is minimized. And all of us know statins have a legacy effect, which all of us are clear. 
Statins, no doubt, are the foundational therapy for lipid management. But when we look at the current goals, the LDL goals are not reached in 50% of patients, as you can see on this slide on the left. And on the right shows that you reach your LDL goals, there's a reduction in the cardiovascular events. So when the statins fail to achieve the LDL goal, you use ezetimibe. Ezetimibe plus statin also failed to achieve in past. We were using PCSK9 monoclonal antibodies, a volocumab, but that is a very costly drug. But now we have a new solution, vampodoic acid. So the sequence would be statin, cisetamide, vampodoic acid, and PCSK9 is only for the very high risk group. Improved trial, all of you are aware of it, and this is the benefit of improved trial, which means you decrease non-fatal MI significantly, the p-value signal, you also decrease non-fatal stroke, which is again significantly, revascularization is also decreased, but unstable angina on the bottom and CV deaths are not minimized. The other drug is vampodoic acid, which is a new kit on the block also available in India for the last few months. It's approved by US FDA also, by EMA also, after the clear harmony trial. And it is recommended to be used in ACVD or HEFH for additional lowering of LDL if it is required. Combination of vampodoic acid is it my, which is a very good combination, is available in the West and also approved by FDA and other bodies, but is not yet available in India, likely to be available in the near future. Now, vampodoic acid, if you remember, is a product. It has to be activated by ACVL1 into an active drug, which is vampodoyl coenzyme A. Now, this enzyme is not present in the skeletal muscle, and this is the reason that if you are using vampodoic acid, the muscle side effects are not there. It blocks the enzyme ACL, that is uh, ATP citrate lysis, and produces decreased synthesis of cholesterol pathway, which is ahead of statin. This is statin pathway, HMG coenzyme reductase inhibitor. And as you can see, it is excreted through uh, this channel OA2, which is the same as for creatinine and uric acid. And this is the reason why uric acid gets elevated. The side effects of vampodoic acid are very less. The major side effects is hyperuricemia, gout, which can be easily taken by drugs if it is concomitant or if it occurs during the course of the therapy. All other side effects are minor. Tendon rupture is a rare but a serious complication. I'll talk to you about this. It is not diabetogenic, rather it decreases diabetes and has a tendency to decrease weight. Now, tendon rupture usually occurs in individuals who are more than 60, taking steroids, chloroquinones, renal failure, and a history of tendon rupture. And if it occurs, the drug should be stopped right at the onset of any symptoms suggestive with. What was very curious that in the clear serenity and clear tranquility trials, which are statin intolerance, tendon rupture was not seen. It was seen in the other two trials, the clear harmony and clear wisdom, which are on top of statin. So it is very likely that this is not directly concerned with vampodoic acid. If you are on a Simba more than 20 prava, again, you should stop it because there's more chances. And here you can see a case illustration which is on statin versus etatomide and has developed tendon rupture. So vampodoic acid, it seems, is not directly related to this, but have statins and other drugs which... Now, these are the trials of the CLEAR program of vampodoic. When would you see CLEAR? It means that it's a vampodoic acid. The upper two trials, CLEAR harmony, CLEAR wisdom are on top of maximally tolerated statins. The lower one are in statin intolerant. Now, it is very easy to remember what would be the decrease in LDL if you are using on top of maximally tolerated statin because statins also decrease synthesis of cholesterol, bambutoic. So, the decrease in LDL would be around about 15 plus minus 2. Here you can see it is 16.5. If you are using a statin intolerant patients, which means the patient is not in statins, the decrease will be around about 25 plus minus 2. So, 15.25. And if you are both drunk, it is 35 plus minus. So you can easily remember 15, 25, and 35. It also has an 
anti-inflammatory action it decreases high sensitivity crp you can see around about 20 percent or uh, 32 percent in the statin intolerant trial and in statin tolerant trial it is around about 20. when you are faced with statin intolerant because if you don't take statin cardiovascular event cardiovascular mortality and all-cause mortality increases Please try to have some statin on the board and one statin which you should never forget is statin, where in statin intolerance is very rare. So when we use both these combination in statin azetamide plus bamprodoic, as we said, is 35 plus minus two, so here is 36 in this. So the best strategy for statin intolerance at the present state of time is statin two or four milligrams, which is usually tolerated when the patient is not tolerating other statin azetamide 10 milligram bamprodoic acid and this is going to emerge as a game changer this is triple combo and i'll show you the data so when we use this triple combo here it was used only in 20 milligram although you can use it much higher this is an australian data you can see if you use this triple combo what happens ldl is decreased by 63 percent 90 percent achieve ldl goal of pcc which is less than 70 58 percent achieve ldl goal of bsc which is less than 55 so very dramatic decrease in LDL. It also has a favorable effect on the other lipid parameters, non HDL, tri, uh, total cholesterol, FOB. The clear outcome trial is ongoing and is likely to be available in a year or two, which will see the effect of pemptoic acid on the cardiovascular event. This is a secondary prevention trial and not a primary event. PCSK9 monoclonal antibodies are the magic bullets for decreasing LDL and they dramatically decrease LDL by 40 to 60 percent which we use in patients with ACS on top of all lipids whether you are using statin or any lipid because the mechanism is different and this reduction translates into reduction in cardiovascular events and they also have other favorable effects decreasing the LPA by 25 percent and the safety is excellent and no diabetogenicity. This is the trial of statin in stable angina and 15% statistically four-year trial reduction in the primary ischemic endpoint. Uh, this is the OCACS trial, a 15% reduction in the ischemic endpoints. And now PCSK9 are also used after the Evopex trial, which use uh, PCS can run right from zero hours during hospitalization at the time of acute coronary event and showed it produced dramatic decrease in the LDL and is safe. So we now have lots of trial in ACS and we use these uh, drugs. The Velocum is available in India uh, and it has shown great results. Rather than said, if after a PCI, you get a recurrence of uh, cardiovascular events, your LDL has not been to the target. Not treating LDL target is the commonest and the most important cause of recurrence of myocardial infarction or CV event after a successful AVI. Homozygous uh, hypercholesteremia is a deadly disease. The problem with this is only few receptors LDL are functioning. So even if you use PCSK9 in HOFH, the results are suboptimal. But Ivanakimab is a new bullet for HOFH because its action is independent of the density of LDL cholesterol receptor. So whether your LDL receptors are working or not, it will continue to react as already been approved, but is a very costly uh, drug. 15 milligram per kilogram IV once a month, which costs few lakhs. Inclisiran again is a very wonderful drug. It melts LDL from the vessel wall, but at a huge price. And the beauty of this is one injection, 300 milligram every six months is required. So two injections per month, and therefore its adherence is likely to be great because two injections uh, per month, per year are simple to take and decreases LDL by 50%, which remains there for the next six months. Icosfetin ethyl, which was carried out in patients with established CVD diabetes with respect as hypertriglyceridemia, uh, 135 to 49, showed positive results, fantastic results, primary endpoint decreased by 25%, secondary endpoint decreased by 26%. And again, as we see, triglyceride less than 150, more than the data is same, clearly indicating the mechanisms of benefit 
In this trial, which is carried out patient with hypotriglycemia is not lowering. There are other mechanisms, antiplatelet, antiplatelet, and others which are being investigated. If you look at the secondary endpoint, the benefit was more in TG less than 150. So clearly, again, showing the same. But the trial has produced fantastic results. All hazard ratios to the left, even the confidence trial will accept one is to the left of the midline, which we rarely see in a day trial. So fantastic results is now also available in India. PCSK9 vaccine is a new strategy. One vaccine a year, the action lasts for one year. Human trials are ongoing. And if this comes out to be positive, a booster dose every year will be a new way to target atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Seroglitazar, all of you are more familiar with it, is a drug with lower triglyceride, also has uh, action on the glycemic control, but and is approved for uh, NFLD. But uh, the problem is that it uh, has no outcome data. Is also approved for Nash and hypertriglycerin. LPA-driven disease, cardiovascular disease, is a malignant disease. All of us know it produces myocardial infarction, atherosclerotic events, and other territories, and also severe aortic stenosis. But uh, uh, LPA-driven disease has been called as a slow death sentence, as a gloomy prognosis because of malignant nature. But with now Pelacarson, which is likely to emerge as a foundational therapy, uh, we are on a verge of new dawn in LPA therapeutics. So in times to come, Pelacarson will improve the life of these patients. And Pelacarson is nothing but an anti-sense therapy to APOA. It acts in the liver. It decreases synthesis of APOA and therefore LPA synthesis is also decreased. This is the uh, secondary uh, phase two study with Pelacarson. You can see 97% reach LPA level less than 50. So trial very likely to come out positive. And this is the secondary prevention trial, Paracorizon, which is ongoing and is likely to be uh, expected results 2024. Gene therapy is now also emerging as a real reality. The first volunteer in New Zealand has become the first person to undergo DNA editing in order to lower his blood cholesterol in gain of function of PCSK9, which produces severe hypercholesteremia. And the HART1 trial is now initiated with uh, VAR101 to treat 40 patients. So in times to come, gene editing is also becoming a real reality. And the beauty of gene editing is gene editing is the big stick because one and done. You don't have a come back for treatment. So when we look at the evolution of lipid modulating therapy, we have statins, oral therapy, which is the foundational drug. You can combine statin with zetamide, icosmetital, bambodic acid, and fibrid. All are daily drugs. Evolocumab, which is available in India, is either every second week, 12 between 14 days or once in a month. Ivanakimab is also monthly therapy, and uh, we have uh, Pelacarson, which is weekly or monthly, usually prefer it to become once a month. Uh, small interfering RNA, which is inclusion, is biannually, which means six monthly therapy. PCSK9 month is annual, and gene editing is for life. So in summary, LDL is the primary target. And non-HDL is the co-primary target. And all of us know that LDL has a causal relationship with ACVD. Non-HDL is a co-primary. Lowering LDL to very low levels, like 30 or even up to 10, is safe and has been documented and provides incremental benefit even at very low LDLs. LDL less than 50 causes regression of atherosclerosis. Less than 35, a risk of progression of atherosclerosis. And in the current scenario, LDL can be cut to any size by the modern therapy. Inclusan has great adherence and melts cholesterol, but at a very big price. And Icospetanditile is now available in India. And Pelacarson is likely to emerge as a transformational therapy to deadly LPA induced cardiovascular disease. Thank you very much for your